the, the rods, you know, now that we got the super lines, we got braided line. I use braided line all the time when I'm around vegetation. You use a lot softer rod. You don't miss near as many fish because you let that bait, you let that fish get your bait. I mean, that's a super soft tip, but it's got a lot of backbone starting to look like the third guide. Uh, I designed a couple of rods with Halo a couple of years ago. It's a, on our TI series, which is the Titanium series. Um, seven and a half foot swim jig rod. It's designed for a swim jig. Because what we were had, we had a seven and a half foot, seven foot six inch heavy flipping stick that people was trying to swim a jig on. You get a bite and you got all this power when you got a flipping stick is doesn't have that soft a tip on it as the, you know, a good swim jig rod would have. And when you had set the hook, you would launch a three or four pounder. I mean, you couldn't get a giant, but you could launch a three, four pounder, which is a great tournament fish, out of the water. And any time a fish's head leaves the water, that increases his odds of coming off tremendously. And I do go to it all the time if I'm flipping docks or if I'm fishing wood or something like that and I'm swimming a jig. We'll talk about that a little bit. And there's another, you know, we can, instead of changing, carrying 50 different colored jigs, you know, I carry chartreuse, orange, black dye. I got markers. I got all that kind of stuff in my boat. If you're trying to get a reaction, but there's days where, man, it's just slick and fish aren't really doing much and it's really slick and calm outside and you can sort of doctor your baits up and try to get a, try to trigger a, and a reaction bite. You know, and that's a lot of times in the spring, you know, I go to some crazy colors. I'll throw, you know, I might put some orange feed on the back of a brown jig with a white trailer. I do that a lot and it just gets a reaction bite. I think, you know, in the springtime when fish are spawning, they can't stand that orange, that methylate and stuff. And that's a big deal, you know, as far as that time of year. Anytime I'm trying to mimic brim around the brim spawn or anything, I dip chartreuse on the very back of my trailers and now that give it a little more flash, a little, a little bit more kick to it, a little more color, and it looks like a little brim. If you look at a brim in the water swimming around, you can see the iridescent colors around their fins and it looks chartreuse on the backs as well. And we talked a lot about the grass that we have around here, the willow grass and stuff. Actually at Garnersville we have, you know, hydrilla, millfoil, and the, anytime you can find a mix of vegetation, even in the willow grass, if you can find a mix, if you, if, like if you go swim a jig in February, where, or when it's cold months like this, if I go swim a jig all day, I can call my shot. If I pull up to a hundred yard stretch of bank in Hatchet Creek on Mitchell, and there's three thick places down through there, three mats. Most of the time, your bite's gonna come out of that thickest place on the whole grass bed. If it's 100 yards long and there's three of those little balls of mats, whether it be cut up grass, a trash mat, whatever, most of the time your bite's gonna come right around that. It just gives them security, so that's a big deal. But if you can find any mix of vegetation when there's two or three different types of vegetation that come together, if you can find it in Florida where there's hydrilla mixing with lily pads, it's a really big deal. If you can find hydrilla mixing with milfoil, it's a really big deal. Anytime you find that combination of more than one type of vegetation, it's going to be a key area for sure. Bass are just, I mean, they're very, very detail oriented. And it changes throughout the day. It don't just change daily, it changes hourly. If you got some cloud cover come up, some wind picks it, and uh, I pick it up. You know, if I'm needing to catch a big one, if I, I pick it up. If you get some wind come up, it really breaks the surface up and it'll get you some bites for sure. It helps out. Cloud cover helps for sure, you know. It sort of breaks that up. Um, just like being in Florida, man, I've fished with some guys in Florida that live in Florida, and if it ever gets cloudy or starts raining, every one of them will pick up a prop bait and start throwing it. It's opportunistic. If the opportunity produce, presents itself, you got to take advantage of it. It's Mike Iaconelli. This is Bash U TV. Here's what's awesome about Bash U TV. You get the top instructors. You will learn things at Bash U that you will learn nowhere else. We take the mystery and the myths out of bass fishing. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. At Bass U TV, shoes are optional. And I like turtles. And that's why you want to check out Bass U TV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass U TV. 